Hello students, I am Professor Avis Ahmed Husseini, working as Assistant Professor in Mechanical Engineering Department at Sherid Institute of Technology, College of Engineering, Edra. In last video, we discussed some fundamental parts of heat load estimation. Now, we will discuss the next part of the heat load estimation. So, the most important thing in case of the heat load calculation is the primary function of that air conditioner is to maintain the condition we must have to maintain the two condition first as far as that uh, air conditioning system is to be concerned the first is that conductive to human comfort that is most important part and second one is that required by the product of the process within the space so we must have to maintain that cooling effect within that uh, particular area so this is most important challenge to perform this function equipment of the proper capacity must be installed and controlled throughout the year the equipment capacity is determined by the actual instrumentation load which is to be generated at the time of the working. So before the load can be estimated it is impressive that the comprehensive survey be made to assure the accurate evaluation of the load component. If the building facilities and the actual instantaneous load within a given mass of the building are carefully studied an economical equipment selection and system design can result and smooth trouble free the heat load estimation the heat gain or the loss is the most amount of the heat instantaneous cooling into the going out to the space the actual load is defined as the amount of the heat which is instantaneously added or removed by the equipment that is the most important part so in case of the heat load estimation the equipment selection is also most important thing so here we will discuss some fundamental uh, things about that building survey and the load estimation. The following the physical aspects must be considered while designing the heat load estimation for residential building or commercial building. The first is that orientation of the building. So in that you must have to consider the facing of the building. So the location of the space to be air conditioner with respect to. There are three reasons. Three important aspects out of them the first is compass point sun wind effect means the direction of the sun uh, the falling on the sun radiation falling on the surface of the building that is most important aspect the second one is that nearby permanent structure that is shading effect we must have to consider that shading effect again and third one is that uh, reflective surface reflective surface that is water sand parking lot it extra so that orientation include these three important that that uh, direction of the sun or the direction of through which that uh, sun radiation are co continuously falling on the surface of the building the second one we must have to consider that shading effect as well as in third case we must have to consider the reflective surface that is water sand parking lots etc so the second important aspect of the building survey is particular application for which application we are designing that heat load estimation so we must have to consider whether that particular space is uh, related with the offices or hospitals department department store specialist shops machine shop factory assembly hospitals restaurants malls etc so we must have to consider the type of the space on the basis of that we will uh, do the heat load calculation by considering the sensible latent as well as the uh, latent heat which is generated uh, through the equipment as well as through the human beings so the next important aspect of the building survey as far as that load estimation is to be considered is the physical dimension of the space so we must have to consider the length width and height these are the three important parameters which are essential in case of the building survey so we must have to measure the length width and height to the, that particular area for that we are uh, preparing that heat uh, load estimation that is most important aspect again now the next is that ceiling height floor to floor height is most important thing again floor to ceiling is also important then the clearance between suspended ceiling and beams are also important uh, while designing that heat load estimation so the next important thing is we must have to know the dimensions that is uh, size depth uh, and uh, 
knee braces regarding that columns and the beams so the next important is that constructional construction materials so in that the material and thickness of the wall roof ceiling floor and partition and their relative position in the structure so you must have to consider the material first for to man already the building is manufactured or constructed by the various uh, materials like cement then gypsum board glass uh, pop etc so we must have to work on it similar way we must have to know the thickness even to take example of the brick we must have to know their dimension of the brick while designing the heat load estimation similar way the roof thickness is also a matter then ceiling thickness is matter then the material required for that wall roof ceiling floors partitions these are the most important things so these all data you will get with the help of the carrier isheray as well as asheray chart so you here you will get idea about that uh, uh, how to calculate that u values for cement kind of the material so here you just consider that solid bricks are there and on the basis of first column the there are some uh, various types of the solid bricks are there uh, so the next important is here the dimension is given in terms of that square feet area similar way uh, gypsum board is required then plaster of the walls metal latch then gypsum board corresponding to that uh, plastered material so these are the all important parameters we need to calculate with the help of that standard charts so these are the u values you will get it with the help of that uh, carrier then isher and asher handbooks so if you consider the second column that is uh, the second row that is stone then if, if we consider that 8 inch brick is there or that stone is there then that uh, if we are we, if we are considering that gypsum board that plaster board then its relevant value of that uh, u is around 0.55 so 0.55 is that overall heat transfer coefficient in such a manner we have to consider again in case of that uh, suppose uh, poured uh, concrete is there some kind of the porous concrete is there if its dimension is suppose 8 inch then its uh, u value is around 0.67 without considering any uh, gypsum and that pop effect then 0.49 is related with that gypsum board so these are the some standard data you will get directly so there is no need of the calculation for calculation of the u values you will get uh, that all values with the help of carrier then isheray and asheray handbooks similar way that surrounding condition are most important you will get that surrounding condition also with the help of uh, carrier chart some uh, isheray and asheray standard uh, um, guidelines books are there so with the help of that data you will get those values so surrounding condition include exterior color uh, exterior uh, color of the wall and roof shaded by adjacent building or or sunlight attic space unvented and vented cavities whatever is there then gravities or forced to ventilation so these are the most important aspect regarding that surrounding condition so we must have to consider the surrounding condition in order to avoid the losses and the next important uh, parameter or aspect you can say it as aspect that is window so we must have to know the size and uh, location of the window in that we must in size we must have to know their length width and height of the window similar way the location whether that window is facing on south north or in between uh, the south and north we must have to consider that particular thing similar way the material is also most important parameter while uh, uh, selecting that window that is whether it is made by some kind of the wood material or some kind of the any glass material you must have to consider and according to that you must have to consider the u values so uh, similar way next in, next aspect is that door we must have to consider that door so these total 17 parameters are only related with the building survey only after that we will work on that u values of individual material after that we consider the sensible and uh, latent heat gain factors so these are the 17 important factor which are only related with the building construction 
so the ninth is that doors to so the location type size frequency of use you must have to know then tenth point is that stairways elevators excavators then their location temperature of the space if open to unconditioned area horse power of the machinery ventilator or not you must have to know it then also uh, if uh, we consider any uh, just take example of any residential building so we must have to consider how many number of the peoples are uh, situated in that area suppose you take example of that building uh, so some kind of the offices or restaurant then we must have to consider the uh, number of the peoples then the number uh, then that particular number is most important then the duration of the occupancy is also important suppose we have to design the heat load calculation for bank so we must have to know how many peoples are continuously uh, entered in the area of that bank also the duration of the occupancy their peak time that is the most important thing then the nature of the activity that nature of activity also play important role uh in case of that uh, designing that uh, air conditioning system we just take example of the sports complex so the activity is more so we must have to consider that particular effect also suppose you take example of the first such kind of the residential building then again activity is more if you just take example of the offices the activity human activity is less so on the basis of that we have to design the air conditioning system we must have to consider this all effect any special concentration also that is the important parameter in case of the people at the time it is required to estimate the number of the people on the basis of the square feet per person on average traffic that is important thing so the next is that lighting so wattage is most important parameter suppose you take example of one uh, residential building so what are the different electrical appliances are included in that like freeze Uh, then uh, air con uh, freeze then electric iron then printer projector such kind of things are there so we must have to know their wattage including that uh, effect of fans then tubes bulbs etc so these are the some important things uh, if the light are uh, recessed uh, the type of the air flow are the light exhaust return supply similar way we must have to consider the effect of the motor also so motor is required for uh, that uh, n number of the application in the domestic as well as in the commercial application so we must have to know their horse power their capacity of the working similar way as far as that appliances is to be considered then we must have to consider n number of the electronic equipments uh, their location related to wattage then steam or gas consumption uh, hooded or unhooded exhaust air quantity installed or required and uses we must have to consider that all those things and uh, the most important aspect that is 15th that is ventilation we must have to consider that uh, cfm per person then cfm per square feet scheduled ventilation also okay so we must have to consider the excessive smoking or odor code requirement exhaust fan type size speed cfm delivery so that cfm uh, play very important role in case of the ahu that is air handling unit so we must have to consider the type of the fan their speed then uh, their uh, relevant parts also that thermal storage play important role in case of the thermal storage include system operation schedule uh, in between that hours 12 16 and 24 hours per day especially during the peak outdoor condition we are designing that uh, heat load estimation we must have to consider that effect in similar way that continuous or intermittent operation whether uh, the system be required to operate every business day during the cooling season or only occupationally such as the uh, churches and uh, boardrooms etc means uh, suppose uh, there are variety of the applications are there where the crowd of the human beings is more uh, in every time but such a application like uh, churches then uh, some kind of the bell rooms where uh, only once in the week or uh, on a special occasion the people are gathered so also we must have to consider such kind of the parameters occasionally parameters related with the uh, heat load estimation so the next important part is that design condition there are uh, two design condition generally used uh, to calculate that heat load estimation first is that indoor and second one is outdoor 
and both are for that summer as well as winter season first we will consider the normal design condition for summer so in case of the normal design conditions are recommended for use with the comfort and industrial cooling application where it is occasionally permissible to exceed the design room condition under outdoor design condition are the simultaneously occurring dry bulb temperature and wet bulb temperature so these are the most important parameter in case of the design consideration we must have to know the dry bulb temperature then wet bulb temperature simultaneously sometimes that relevant or that re relative humidity is most important aspect that is moisture content also we need to have to calculate in case of that summer as well as for winter condition which can be expected to be exceeded a few times a year for a short periods the dry bulb temperature exceeds more frequently than the wet bulb temperature and usually when the wet bulb temperature is lower than design when cooling and de uh, dehumidification are performed separately with this type of the application use of the normal design dry bulb temperature for selecting the sensible cooling app apparatus use a moisture content corresponding to a normal design wet bulb temperature and 80% rh for selecting the humidifiers so while considering that effect of humidification and dehumidification we must have to consider uh, the effect of dry bulb temperature wet bulb temperature as well as that relative humidity so this range varies with the local climatical conditions suppose we are situated in the uh, mumbai area then we must have to consider the indoor and outdoor uh, design consideration for mumbai area only such kind of the data is available in uh, ashray uh, the sorry that ishray as well as that carrier handbook where we will get that indian climatical data suppose if we if we, if we are designing one kind of the residential building in alaska region uh, so we must have to consider that ashray that is important so ashray uh, in ashray guidelines uh, everything is mentioned uh, the foreign data so as far as that indian climatical condition we must have to consider or we must have to follow the guidelines which is coming from ishray as well as carrier so you will get all information with the help of uh, ishray as well as carrier handbook you will get dry bulb temperature wet bulb temperature and relative humidity for a particular region okay so that the maximum design uh, conditions for summer is nothing but that maximum uh, summer design condition are recommended for the laboratories and industrial application that is important not it is not for that uh, uh, domestic application keep in mind where exceeding the room design condition for even short period of time can be uh, detrimental to a product or the processes the maximum design dry bulb temperature and wet bulb temperature are simultaneously peaks the moisture content in, uh, is also important parameter so each of these conditions can be expected to be exceeded not more than 3 hours in the normal summer so this is uh, all for that uh, commercial buildings and industrial application mostly but when we talk about that normal design con consideration for uh, winter so normal winter design uh, conditions are recommended for use with all comfort and industrial heating application it is not for the cooling application so the uh, outdoor dry bulb temperature can be expected uh, to go below the listed temperature a few times uh, a year that is important so annual degree days listed are the sum of all days in a year on which the daily mean temperature falls below 65 fahrenheit dry bulb temperature that is time the number of the degrees between 65 fahrenheit and the daily mean temperature we must have to consider so uh, suppose uh, you just have to calculate that indoor and outdoor condition that is dry bulb temperature wet temp uh, wet bulb temperature and moisture content then uh, you must have to calculate with the help of ishray ashray and carrier handbook suppose uh, uh, here we are consider that is alabama so definitely we must have to consider that ashray guidelines ashray handbook where we will get the information about that alabama suppose our residential building or commercial building or any restaurant or shopping complex is situated in the alabama region so here we must have to consider that dry bulb temperature wet bulb temperature and moisture content relevant with that 
so here uh, these are the some important column the first column is uh, related with the dry bulb temperature second one is a wet bulb temperature second one is that moisture uh, content fourth one is the average daily range is also there then here is the normal design condition but here the maximum design condition it is mostly for industrial application and the, if we want to uh, know the values of the dry bulb and wet bulb and moisture content for residential then we can consider that normal if for uh, for industrial application if you want to find the dry bulb wet bulb and moisture content then you can uh, use uh, these data so such kind of the information you will get with the help of the ashray handbook where we will get indoor as well as outdoor condition uh, conditions like uh, dry bulb temperature wet bulb temperature and the moisture contents so thank you students our uh, uh, this particular video is uh, only designed to know only the fact about that uh, uh, constructional uh, application uh, construction materials as well as their dimension and their sizes so our next video will be on the next part of the heat load estimation so the purpose uh, of uh, to making such kind of the this particular video uh, is to know the facts out the building only their orientations then uh, the material used then uh, their geometries then uh, the consideration of the indoor and outdoor these are the most important parameter while uh, designing the heat load estimation so it will help you to understand uh, that particular uh, basic fundamental things related with the building only so our next video uh, we will discuss that sensible and latent heat load and how to calculate that u values and all for a particular uh, material thank you